Hello folks, welcome to NetCruiser Tech. Today I've got a new tech product to show you. It's a mini projector. This projector is the Unlimited TV mini projector. It's 720p native, but it will output 1080p. And it has a lot of features. 2001 contrast ratio, 50 plus lumens improvement over the older version, and it has quite a few things in it that I thought were quite interesting. This model can support NES format games. It's gonna be quite interesting. We've gotta take it out of the box, take a look at it, hook it up, see how it performs. Now this is a mini projector, it's not a portable projector. So it is gonna require power all the time. So you do get cabling with it. It uses a standard AC plug as well as you get some other connections. You do get an HDMI cable and some analog inputs. So that's actually a good thing to have because on a lot of the modern projectors and modern televisions, you lose all analog inputs. So if you have an older device that you need to have analog inputs for, this one still has you covered, even though it's a 2019 model. So here it is, and it is pretty mini. On the side here, you have two USB ports, HDMI in, AV in, headphone out, Another USB port, so we've got three USB ports so far. A coaxial input. I'm gonna make sure to see does it work on North American coax standards or not. All these are somewhat unknowns. I did look in the manual and it's unclear. You do get your zoom adjustment, your keystone correction, and your keypad here for uh, controlling menus. The remote control is a fairly basic, although it does look like it glows in the dark or lights up. You have to pry on the edge here to get this up and it takes two AAA batteries. On the bottom we have four feet, uh, one adjustable kickstand. As on most projectors you do need something that will allow it to raise the front, so that's your adjustable kickstand on the front. We have something under here for, I'm not sure, we would need a screwdriver to open that hatch and see what's under there. The optics on it look to be quite large, actually, for a mini projector. This has as big of a lens as my standard full-size projector. So in the manual, you do get a cleaning cloth for cleaning the lens. And the manual itself is fairly basic. The coaxial input is considered an analog TV port into the menus as we get into it, but it does have a media playback mode, so you can hook up USB sticks and play your media. And then we have these two game modes. OSD game introduction allows you to choose an OSD game. OSD usually means on-screen display. I don't know what that is. This one, Nintendo Entertainment System, your projector is basically an NES Classic at this point. You just put the ROMs on the projector onto a USB port and plug in a controller and it should be able to play some NES games. So we will also try that. And that's why you get so many USB ports is because you need to use multiple USB ports for each gamepad. Two gamepads must be inserted side by side using the side USB ports. One thing I do note is that this machine says it does not support Dolby Digital. So it likely only does two channel audio. All right, let's test out this mini projector out. I've just got it propped up here on a couple of boxes. I've got it plugged in and we'll power it on. It is a little loud. I did play with it a little bit already, just learning how it works. And it is a fixed fan speed. There is no eco mode, there is no silent mode. It is always this noise all the time when it's running. So I've got it set back probably around 10 to 12 feet and I've got a display that's this big. And this is what you get when you first power it on. You get into this menu system and you can scroll through using the included remote control and the IR sensor is on the rear of the unit, so that's where it picks it up there. And I also have a USB stick plugged in because in my opinion, that's likely the best use case for this is just plug in media and then play it directly off USB, as well as this cable here is running a game controller, which is uh, designed for Nintendo Switch, but actually works well with lots of different devices. And uh, I've got it plugged in through the USB-C port, and this does work. I will show you how to play games on this. So as far as inputs go, you've got HDMI, you can play movies off USB, you can play photos off USB, you can have text. It's really weird. These three here load you into a separate menu, which then lets you load things up on the USB stick. And then you've got game modes. Built-in game modes, you've got on-screen game, which has games included of Boxman, Tetris, and Gobang. 
Boxman is a game where you're just moving these chests around into blocking different markers. Sit, take me home, please. Tetris is built into this. You can play Tetris with the included remote control. So yeah, that's pretty neat that it's got some games built in. Hit home to go back. And Go Bang, I do not know what Go Bang is. Some sort of game I'm not familiar with. I don't know how to play this. I'd have to look it up. Okay, home to go back. In the setup menu, there's not a whole lot here. You've got a couple of picture modes, standard, dynamic, mild, and user. They really don't change a whole lot. User just lets you change the contrast, brightness, color, sharpness, uh, color temperature, and noise reduction. Not a whole lot to it. I'm just gonna go back to standard mode. I've got it set for 16 by nine. Screen mode is on auto, front projection. You can set it to have horizontal or vertical flip, and it's running on system software from September 20th, 2019. So this is a very new projector. It does have a basic speaker built in, but it's very tinny as I'll show you in a minute. And when you get into actual movie controls, there is a way to set your, um, set your zoom ability of it being standard 16 by nine or just scan. It does have a TV tuner input in it, although I cannot get any of my coax cables to fit into this. So this is a non-standard North American style coax. So I cannot test that. So I can't test TV tuner ability, but it does have one built in as well as you can have analog AV input or HDMI input. So let's show you quickly what movie playback is like. Uh, FAT32, and this is a 1080p 60 video that I just, a recorded clip that I have. Hello folks, welcome to NetCruiser RC. Today I've got some new stuff to show you from Arma RC. And there's the speaker quality, and this is playing back 1080p. As they did just announce their new Mojave 7 scale control feature. Do you hear that skipping? It doesn't play back entirely smoothly, now, as this is a high bit rate. 1.5 gigabyte file, 1080p, 60 frames a second. Here's all the new things that you can see. So let me go back a level and I'll play another movie. Shut the back lights off here so you can get an example of what it's like in the dark. The projector is bright, 2000 lumens. It works out pretty well. This is a 720p movie and I've got it set for just scan so it will do letterbox effect. And it looks not too bad. If you were able to hook this up to external speakers to drown out the fan noise, it actually produces an acceptable picture for the price. Just going to see if I can fast forward through here a little bit. So yeah, plays back stuff pretty good. All right, now one of the very unique features about this, as I showed you in the game settings, was that it has an NES emulator. And to hook up your joystick, there's a joystick add option. Let's go in the joystick add, hit the down arrow on the on the remote control to get into the program mode. And then everywhere where there's a yellow on the controller, you hit the corresponding button on your actual controller. So you go through and you program all the buttons so that it knows the button mapping. And that way it can control many different controllers. And then you hit the L1 button to save. Joystick save is complete. And then once you have your game controller programmed, you can download an NES ROM and this projector has a built-in NES emulator, so you can load up a ROM and it will play Nintendo games directly on the projector off of the USB stick. All you have to do is load on an NES ROM. It's not exactly perfect emulation. It will stutter a little bit, but it does work. I don't remember how to play Battletoads. So yeah, you can play old Nintendo games. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting my butt kicked. But yeah, you can play NES games. Alrighty guys, so that's the new mini projector. It does work. My only complaints with it really is fan noise. If it was quieter, it would be really nice. It is a fairly portable unit, but just keep in mind that it has no mounting points on the bottom that I could see, so it's going to be hard to hang. As well as, if you need to do keystone correction, for the buttons on the front, this ring here is for focus, so I can pull focus. And this one here is for keystone correction. Now, keystone correction really blurs it out, so we try and get it as level as possible. But if you were trying to tighten it up, if you were trying to align it for your projector, then that's 
what Keystone Correction does is it tilts the lens. Now when it does tilt the lens, it adds a little bit of blur to the edges, but overall it works. The rest of your buttons are fairly self-explanatory. Power button, back button, home button, menu button, up, down, left, right, okay. And a very similar feature set on the remote control as well. All right guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button if you know around here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll put links in the description for this projector if you want to check it out. It's around $100 US and it's got a pretty neat feature set actually. It does what it says it will do. All right guys, thanks for watching.